again pays the price for not going into the net when she had the mid-court ball and that is a huge win for Lisa Raymond and only a fourth defeat of the year for Martina Hingis and you've seen two of them live on Eurosport moment she'll savour a brilliant win and boy did she play well after a wretched start world number one goes out well, that was certainly not in the script no autographs tonight from Martina Hingis She had a, quite a verbal onslaught on the Swiss press at the start of the week. And one wonders whether that's affected her at all. But let's take nothing away from Lisa Raymond, who's been playing superbly for the last two weeks and played superbly tonight. Having lost her opening two service games, bounced back and thoroughly deserved a great win. All right, so tomorrow it's Lindsay Davenport against Jana Novotna, the doubles partners playing against each other, and Lisa Raymond against Natalie Tozia, two unseeded semi finalists there. And for Raymond, it's a question of putting today behind her and continuing the great form. I hope you'll join us live for those. Semi-finals, we'll have uh, semi-finals from Leon later tomorrow as well. We'll be on air at 1 o'clock live. Coming up now, we're going to hand you over to Leon and pick up the match in progress there. Second seed, Yevgeny Kavalnikov against Mark Kevin Golner, the conqueror of Tim Henman. Simon Reid and Phil McMillan will be picking up the commentary there. For me, David Mercer, on this momentous night for Lisa Raymond. Good night. to those who wait. Quarterfinals between Martina Hingis and Denisa Schlad Schladkova. And Eva Maioli beat Hingis at the French Open, continues to roll here against a lot of expectations. But Anna Kornikova, her 16-year-old opponent, is playing very well and could well upend Maioli tomorrow. Tonight, we ask you to check out our highlight show, hosted by Ellen Wills Moody, was about to win a fourth straight title with a face that suggests veritable monuments to self-satisfaction, like Martina Hingis, who's had only one tennis slip-up all year and regards the Wimbledon title as a happy inevitability. She's 16. Like Anna Kornikova, who was worth millions at age 12 and now finds her game catching up to her credit card bills. She's 16. Amy Johnson was an adult, but her passion inspired a young woman named Amelia Earhart. Novotna wants the same thing. She's been the queen of bumpy landings in the past. And speaking of landings, Sampras to the control of the Czech Republic, first meeting ever between the two. Plotkova, 18 years old. Hingis, as you know, is Second 16, set. seated number one, ranked number one in the world. Martina has taken the first set, 6-3, and Hladkova serves as we start the second set. Love 15. Martina, what kind of a player is Denisa? 
Well, I watched her play her second set against uh, Lindsay Davenport in the second round, and uh, she's a good, uh, good runner. She moves really well around the court. Backhand's a lot better than her forehand. Serve gets a little iffy, but a good, solid player. Was movement the key to her victory over Davenport? I think the key was Lindsay just Indeed. missing too many shots. She had she had the sh she had the opportunities to win the points, but missed too many unforced errors. And definitely, Khatkwa was able to get out of a lot of trouble with her uh, fast and feet, fast serve. legs. Well, these two are good friends. Oh. They're only two years apart, but they're very good friends. I would think it'd be difficult for them today. 1540. Klaukova looks to me like she's uh, like a diamond in the rough compared to Martina Hingis, even though she's the older one. She looks like she has a lot less experience. And her game really hasn't matured yet because she looks like she's kind of a little unpredictable and erratic. So you think it's tough for good friends to play each other? I do. Well, you and Martina Jeez. get along pretty well, but you always had the switch blades out when you played. It was difficult. <laughs> you really do have to really play the ball. I always made a real effort to play the ball, not my opponent when it was my friend. Yeah. Right, the racket. The over. <laughs> she never gets racket abuse called. That's not very amazing. much. Yeah, she gets away with it for the most part. Oh, Ooh. Game is Kladkova. Denisa Kladkova. First game, second Taking the set. first game, first the second game. set. And we take a look at an overall statistical analysis of the match so far. Unforced errors, 14 to 8. Kladkova, that's, that's not the statistic you want to be winning. And winners, <laughs> 25 to 23. That's pretty even. First serve percentage, uh, Hingis is 60%. That's kind of iffy for her. Usually she's a little better than that. Two service breaks. Yeah, because Hingis doesn't really have a huge serve, so she should have a very high percentage on that. Klapkov, I love Steffi Groff. That's who she thinks she's patterned her game after. Yeah. You see the similarities? Not really. Can she run like Steffi? That would be the closest cool. similarity, I think. Yeah, she doesn't have the long legs, but she's very fast. And yeah, she's quick. quick. Time. But otherwise, she looks like uh, most of the kids coming up today that have been on the tour with the two-handed backhand, better backhand, not as good a forehand. I think she's a better mover into the court as well. I've seen her, uh, mm -hmm. she moves up to the ball really well, and that's, that's the difference also between the baseliners. Most of them do not like to move into the court. She's good getting up to the ball. 15 left. The woman whom Hingis dispatched in the round of 16, Sabine Appelmans of Belgium, gushing with praise in her post-match discussion with media, 40 went so far as to say that she felt Hingis was better right now than Graf or Sellis when she played against them. She said it's different playing Martina. She's always in the right place. She always makes the right decision. In the right place at the right time would be a perfect um, description of Martina Hingis. 40-15. Appleman said that Hingis gets more easy points than either Graf or Sellis ever did. Hmm. Game is Hingis. It's unbelievable. I keep thinking Hingis should be about 25 to 30 years old. Long game the way she plays. Oh, absolutely. This, this is, she just doesn't remind me of a 16-year-old in any way shape or form just the way she plays she's just looks like she's won Wimbledon five times the way she's playing don't worry I didn't say nine Martina don't get nervous <laughs> <laughs> oh. look at that it's like so 
casually beautiful. Yeah, she just got completely out of trouble. This slice had so much slice on it, Khodkova did well just to get the, under the ball with her racket and then just dismisses the backhand volley. Lovely. Coaching or instinct or both? Both. More instinct than coaching. But again, she practices differently you know, from the other players. She hits balls from all over the place. She, um, she tries different things. She doesn't just hit the same shot over and over. She's, you know, she's always trying out different shots, different spins, improvises, and then she can do that during a match as well. Oh, she's playful. You know, she practices playfully instead of by rote. Also, she plays both doubles and mixed doubles. And some of the other great players haven't taken advantage of the opportunity to do that. Especially when they're young. I think it's absolutely vital. Fifteen footy. She's not perfect. She does occasionally make a mistake. And if players are afraid to play both singles and doubles because they would get too tired, that means they're not in good enough shape. Exactly. It's, it's just such a cop-out. Especially at Grand Slams where you get days off in between most of the time, unless you get rained out. Breakpoint opportunities, two of five for Higgis, one of seven for Khlatkova. And then advances, Khlatkova was seven for seven, Hingis was five for eight, so Khlatkova needs to get to the net more. If she can. Game is Hingis. And another easy game for Martina Hingis. She watched Denise Klotkova walking to the changeover. And we take a look back to 1994 when Martina Hingis won the Wimbledon Junior Championship, came on the heels of her just, just having won her second French Junior Championship. In the final against Cheyenne, she was indomitable. Prior to that, she had in the semifinal that year destroyed Anna Kornikova in a uh, landslide victory. And there's a possible rematch upcoming in this year's semifinals in the main women's draw if they are both able to win today. I watched that match, Jim, uh, from, they played on court three, and so that's the court that you can watch from the locker room, the ladies' locker room. And I watched most of that, and, and like you said, uh, Hingis destroyed Kurnikova. It was six love, six love. If we get a semifinal here ah. between Hingis and Kurnikova, we're not gonna get that for sure. Won't be six love, six love. Not the way Kornikova is playing now. But at that time, there was a broad gap in sophistication and knowledge of the game, right? Well, Hingis played uh, Kornikova again in the U.S. Open. It was a much closer match. But that match here on grass, she had Kornikova in tears. <laughs> she was so desperate to even win a game, and she couldn't. And she was used to being number one in juniors as well, or number two at worst. And here she was getting destroyed. And one of the things that's tough to take is when she's ripping you up like that, she's smiling about two-thirds of the time. She's loving it. I would, too. Oh! Ooh! <laughs> Little late call. Fifteen. Well, there's the unforced errors. Can't afford those against uh, Hingis. 40, 50. Of course, a lot of errors against Hingis are forced errors, not unforced errors. She forces you to make unforced errors. To make <laughs> errors all the time. She's so aggressive off the ground. She gets so close to lines as well. Hingis, and she makes it look easy. 40, 30. <laughs> yeah, I don't feel she's got such great depth on her shots, but she hits really oh. close to the sideline. She does. S Monica Sellers hit closer to the sidelines than anybody I ever played against, and Hingis is right following in her footsteps. Right, therefore you run all, you're running farther oh. all the time. On every point you're running a couple of steps farther. You better be in great shape. Oh my Jeez. goodness. Back to back double faults. Oh! Ooh. 
advantage with Kladkova. Great point opportunity for Kladkova. Let's first serve. Suddenly struggling with her serve, Vladkova takes advantage of a strong return. Two games over. Denisa is becoming the Menisa. <laughs> Denisa, the Menisa Hladkova. <laughs> that's what they're going to call her. She starts winning a lot, that's for sure. <laughs> then it's the Menace. No! Love 15. Kalkova on her back can always feel like sometimes that, uh, that she's really body before racket. She leans in too quickly with her body and then her racket never catches up. Exactly. At point of contact, so she looks disconnected. So she's late. On Which it. means you yes. push the ball. You're late. 15. You don't either get it as far cross court as you want to right. or you, when you're aiming down the line it goes wide. Or you'll cover the ball. Also sometimes you'll cover the ball. His remarkable ability to pinch the lines with her ground strokes. Second set and by one and she breaks left. back with a vengeance after the game in which she struggled so mightily with her serve. Critics say of Martina Hingis, one area where she needs work still, second serve. What do you think, Martina? Well, she can improve both her serves, but my God, she's 16 years old. <laughs> you know? I remember, it, uh, it was, I think it was John Newcomb criticizing Andrea Yeager that she didn't have a better overhead. She was 14 years old. I'm like, I wish I had those ground strokes. And here you go, looking at ser second serve points one. Hingis is at 44%, Kladkova 18. That is shocking. They're both but have it higher than that. that. That means they're both much better at returning than serving. Right. You need, you need around 50, 55% uh, points one on the second serve to be holding. But uh, yes, of course she can get better. The scary thought is she will get better. Like she said herself, she's just now becoming a woman. Time. She's put on a few pounds, baby fat. I remember it well. I only put on 30. <laughs> so she's way <laughs> ahead of the game. And uh, looks in pretty good shape. And she will, she will improve just by maturing and getting older. And then she will also improve because she works at her game. She wants to get better. Well, you were mentioning earlier is how she'll go out and be, be very playful and try different shots. It is amazing how difficult it is to get the top players to try to experiment. Just experiment. Have fun. Experiment. They don't like doing it. Love 15. Takes them out of their comfort zone. But yeah. the thing is, they don't want to do it even in practice. I'm talking about practice, just for fun. Like Let alone the match. Weeks before a tournament is coming up. They don't like to do it. If her clothing and equipment and uh, commercial sponsors begin to ask for no horseback riding clauses, will she use her leverage to resist that demand? Completely. So in addition to everything else, she's balanced in her view of life. Well, she doesn't mind taking risks. She doesn't think horseback riding is taking a risk. Of course, most of the time it's not for her because she's very good. But of course, sometimes the horse does a stupid thing and off you go. <laughs> you can't control the horse. 
as well as you would like. Klopko <laughs> trying a different tactic, which my father told me never to do. 40, 50. Hitting a drop shot off a serve. Never? Um, never, ever. Of really? course, I always tried it, and when I won the point, I still felt guilty. <laughs> And when I lost the point, I'm like, yeah, my father was right. And if I won the point, then I felt guilty. So either way, I lost. But most of the time, it's not a good idea. Oh. But like you said, experiment. Why not? That time Kotkoa hits a drop shot when she's got Hingis on the run. Not a usual situation for Hingis, but she also is a very good retriever. I don't think she gets enough credit for that. She gets out of trouble she's a lot. Oh, she's amazing, I think. Her recovery on her shot. Miss Hingis. And the rare ace. People don't talk about her movement. They just say she's always in the right place at the right time. Well, she's there because she's fast. You know, she gets there. Game is Hingis. Well, she stays over her feet so well. If you notice, Hingis, her, she really uh, stands Hingis up straight. And and her back team. is very erect. That means she's over her feet. You know, it's, it's just amazing. That's what makes her such a great athlete. You don't see her falling down very often. She's there. Her body gets her to the ball. Oh. Does her mother get credit for all the superior technique? Well, she's the one, the only one that's been teaching her. So she Fifteen should. Months. She's been her coach as well as her hitting partner. I just hope it works out all right as the years go by. Because I think in some ways she's fulfilling her mother's dream. Because her mother said she always wanted to be a great player. And won the French and other titles. Oh. And Fifteen. that could backfire later. They're quite open about it now. And Martina's obviously quite comfortable with it right now. But time. We'll tell whether that changes. 16 is a lot different than 18. Out. 15 30. But Kova was taught by her grandfather. He went out and bought tennis books and taught her uh, through just reading the textbooks and on tennis. 15, 40. That's a friend of mine who was my competitor in uh, Czechoslovakia, Renata Tomanova. She's yes. two years older. Uh -huh. Same thing. Her father bought books and learned how to teach tennis. Okay, Miss Hingis. Full Great turn, shoulder please. rotation on the backhand by Hingis. Fires it into the corner. And moves Hingis very close now to set and by one a quarterfinal conquest of... Denisa Hlatkova that would move her on into the semifinal round. The winner of the match between Eva Maioli, French Open champion from Croatia, and Anna Kornikova of Russia awaits the winner of this match between Hlatkova and Hingis. Will it be Kornikova, the 16-year-old sensation of the London tabloids? Some players come here and, and hope that the tabloids will leave them alone. Kornikova you get the impression, probably gets up every morning, buys six, and looks for her picture in every one. <laughs> she With likes great the, satisfaction so far, I might she, say. She likes the spotlight, no question about it. And there's Martina Ingus' huh. mother, Melanie Molitor. <laughs> Never far away. Klotkova's putting in a pretty good showing, considering she's never won a match in grass before <laughs> and uh, never certainly been this far in any Grand Slam or uh, even any big tournament. This is a big occasion, and she's holding up really well. I think we'll be seeing her again, Billie Jean. Oh, for sure. 
I mean, so teams. far, her biggest thrill in tennis, most memorable uh, event, is when she won a satellite tournament in Scotland. I mean, that's the biggest thing so Let far for her. Well, I, I think that's eclipsed now. She came to Wimbledon. She beat Lindsay Davenport. She made it to the quarterfinal and played Martina Hingis on center court. Oh. Doesn't get much better than that. You could probably list her top eight accomplishments in tennis just from the last 10 days. <laughs> 15.30. Wait, please. Wait, please. First serve. Chair umpire Jane Harvey. Don't, don't say that name in front of Monica Sellers. That's you. Jane Harvey overruled when Monica was serving for the match at 5-3 in the third, love 15. Correct call on the baseline, was called long, and Jane Harvey said, no, nope, correction, the ball was in. Love 30 instead of 15 all. It's love 30. Monica went crazy. 40, 30. Here at Wimbledon. Yeah, that was in the, when she lost the match against Custard. I'm sorry. Yeah. And while we're talking about Monica Sellers, Hingis has a match point. Furthermore, while we're talking about Monica Sellis, if you're watching Monica, we wish you the best. So Martina Hingis completes her conquest of Denisa Sladkova. 6-3, 6-2. Some fine moments for Sladkova in the match, but all in all, another big smile for Hingis as she moves from the quarterfinal into the semifinal and awaits the winner of the match that we'll be showing you in just a short time between Eva Maioli and Anna Kornikova. Now let's move over to court number one where Mary Carrillo, Martina Navratilova, and Billy... Sure there's many more to come. They had world number one Martina Hingis in action against Denisa Kladkova. Kladkova, two years older than the Swiss Miss, but Hingis's game clearly more developed. Hingis, serving for the match, still has not lost a set at these championships, and she seems to be unaffected by a cold or the accelerated rate of play. We couldn't play that many matches first week. I mean, they were like three days of tennis, and I mean, for me, it's, it's like a normal tournament where you have to play day by day. Anya Kornikova has also been...